I rarely speak of this uh, Wallagonia Illyriae, the helicopter catfish in this tank. We bought her at about um, her or, or, or him, I'm not sure of the gender. We bought it uh, in 2015 from the Shark Aquarium just before George closed up. So this fish at about a foot long. So that was eight years ago. So this fish is about nine years old. It's a runt. It doesn't have a pelvic fin on this side, on the right hand side facing us, as you can see. It's tail, it grew to about three feet, maybe even over, but it looks about three feet to me. Hopefully it will continue to grow. For the longest time it was only feeding on pellets. And then, um, I don't remember, maybe about um, Well, yeah, it started feeding on herring as well, but in moderation. And when we switched away from, from herring, upon finding out that herring has thymine, a lot of thyminase, the destroyer of the vitamin B1, he wouldn't, uh, this fish wouldn't accept the new kinds of fish, the Atlantic mackerel, the mullet, big mullet, the finger mullet. So it was holding out for a long time. Or maybe it also had a B1 deficiency, just not as bad as others. So it fasted for about, I don't want to say six or eight months. And then about half a year, half a year ago, it started feeding again. And it started feeding a lot. I mean, swallowing huge, either mackerel or two or huge pieces of two foot uh, cut up two foot mullet its brother um, a younger brother that we got in like 20 what's happening over there some kind of commotion and there's a scale in the water. Somebody lost a scale. Um, its brother, um, another Lyriae or Micropogon, I don't know which one they are. They're hard to tell apart. Usually you have to know where they come from. Whether they're from, if they're from the Mekong River, that'd be Micropogon. If they're from the islands, that's if I remember correctly, that's going to be Lyriae. Traditionally, they've been all called Lyriae, both of them, before they got separated into two species. But anyhow, it's his it's brother, it lives in the 2500 gallon tank. It's younger, we got him, I think, in either 2018 or something like that, 2017, 18. So it's about two or three years junior. Again, if you remember, that one was dying from the B1 deficiency and I had to give it two shots, no, one shot and one bath. And now it's back in the 25,000 gallon. These fish have no uh, sharp spines in their, in their fins, so they're safer to keep on the rubber liner in the 25,000. So I can always, it, it's always in reserve to transfer this fish in, into the 25,000 gallon. But it's been doing so great in here that I decided for now just to leave it here and uh, just to have it a, as a backup plan. Plus I don't know how they both will, they may not like each other in the 25,000 gallon. They are not big enough so they, they can keep away from each other. And there is, of course, wells in there too, who who also needs to be taken into consideration. Out on the cloudy water, I when you when I fed 
the water was crystal clear just before I fed 10 pounds of Atlantic mackerel. It's so fatty, it's, uh, it clouds up the water. It's a good, good feeding fish, but it's big disadvantage is it's, it's very fatty. And the water is cloudy and there is a film on a filthy film on the on the surface of the water after you feed it. A, um, a greasy film I should say. Yeah, yeah, it's all about you. Alright, so that's a little update on the fish that we almost never film and never update. Our nine-year-old uh, helicopter catfish. They have fearsome dentition, but uh, and the nasty reputation that they they bite aggressively when they're handled. But I've I've never seen them cause problems except to each other, to any tank mates, or when we handle them either. I mean, never had any problem like trying to really to bite me. Wells did bite me when I was handling him. But he was bigger though, so who knows? We have to respect their they have very formidable tooth patches. Very sharp big hooks curved backwards. That's their teeth uh, tooth patches. And a big mouth also. Neither in, in the 25,000 gallon nor here, I didn't see them try to prey on tank mates or be aggressive to, to other tank mates other than uh, their own kin. So their reputation, at least in my hands, has been has not proven itself that they're dangerous and uh, problematic fish to house. and bite its dorsal fin once in a while and I don't know why it lets him do that but every now and so there's a piece of fin that's missing from the from the dorsal fin it's the work of the Paco or maybe the Dissichotas, I'm not sure, it's one of those one of those two <laughs> 